Listen up, Charlotte. There's a new Safer Rideshare app coming to the city called Scoop M, and they're hiring drivers now. Drivers can make 15% more than other rideshare companies, and they treat their drivers better. Sign up now at www.scoopme.com. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Game with Tiffany Lewis. I'm your host. I believe health, hope, and community are essential to our life's journey. In this week's podcast, I sat down with longtime friend Keith Belton. Hear how he's making his mark as one of the most sought-after strength and conditioning coaches, and now he can add philanthropists to the list. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk game. So we're sitting low today for those who watch and tune in to Let's Talk Game visually. I'm your host, Tiffany Lewis, and I've taken a little hiatus in 2019 because I'm expecting our third child, but my friend is in Charlotte, yes. and uh, I had to make it happen, and he made it happen <laughs> with me. So welcome, Keith Belton. Thank you. Thanks AKA for having Thump. me. Thump. That's right. That's for right. All people, well, we're going to get into that, but yeah. uh, many people do and don't know you by that name. Yes. Um, Coach Belton is another <laughs> alias. What else? What other aliases do uh, I not Coach know? KB. That's okay. the biggest thing since really? I've been in coaching is Coach KB. I like that one. Um, I actually like that one, too. Yeah. I adopted that one. I was at Baylor when I adopted that one. Uh, Thump is always good for mm-hmm. people who know me, but a lot of people who don't know me obviously don't call me that. But Coach KB has been it's been the name for the past 10 years. 10? Ten. 10 years. So yeah. that's how long you've been on this professional trajectory of a collegiate coach. Yes. That's a long time. It is a long Tell time. age. I know. I'm showing it, too. <laughs> no, you look great. You really Thank look you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. How does it feel to be back in uh, the Queen City, in Charlotte, North Carolina? A lot has changed, mm-hmm. but a lot is the same. Mm-hmm. You know, riding around, obviously, you have new highways and things like that that you just didn't expect. Um, they got a freaking uh, light rail going through downtown. I'm like, what in the world is this? Like a trolley type deal, which I thought was cool, but it stopped in the middle of the project, it seems like. So I don't know if they're going to continue that whole project up Bates for a road like yeah. I thought they was. But a lot has changed. Um, it's a lot more diverse now than it was when I was in Woods growing up. I found myself looking at license plates when I was driving over here, and I saw license plates from, from Hawaii. I saw Texas. I saw Ohio. I saw Michigan. I saw California. And when we was growing up, it was a North Carolina tag or a South Carolina tag. And it was amazing. And so it just really shows how much Charlotte is really growing, which is good for the city. We have a lot of people who tune in visually um, as well. But if you see behind us on set, this is Trade Street. And Trade Street extends to Batesport Road <laughs> for all the people who say they live uptown. You connect straight to Batesport Road. That's right. And, um, and so right down Batesport Road is a high school both you and I attended, the prominent West Charlotte High School. That's right. That's and you right. posted video upon your arrival. Uh, you said, hey, West Charlotte, I'm here. That's it. How did it feel to be back? Amazing. Mm-hmm. It's home. It's home. I think a lot of times you go to different places and you visit different cities and be a part of different institutions, but you live in somebody else's tradition. When you get a chance to walk those hallways and step on those football fields again, there's no place like it. What did it smell like? Did it smell new or did it smell like the... It smelled like West Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> it, smelled like, it smelled like West Charlotte, just the way I wanted to smell. It smelled just like West Charlotte and I haven't, I haven't smelled that. It's, it's different. And the people who have went there and, and invested a lot of time there, they know what that smells like. Mm-hmm. If you never went there and you didn't sit in those classrooms, you don't know what that, that stench smells yeah. like. But it's not, it doesn't stink. It just smells like pride. <laughs> we need to make a, a cologne, <laughs> West Charlotte Pride <laughs> cologne and perfume. It up. That's right. But you remember it added to your moral fiber <laughs> oh. and added to mine as well. Yes. So, but, but tell me this, though. I mean, mm-hmm. because I think as much as that fragrance is ingrained in who you are and you never forget it, you never lost touch. What do you say to those people who believe that you forgot about your community? Believe that I forgot about my community? I I really can't control their perception. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's one of those things too. I don't think they would feel that way if I was still living here Mm -hmm. and they saw me broke down and naked, they probably wouldn't feel like that. But because, you know, I was blessed enough to, one, have a great wife and have a great family to support me and go chase my dreams and live in different parts of the country, 
but I've always referenced Charlotte or West Charlotte and anything I've ever done. Any any interview I've ever done, they ask me where I'm from, I always say I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Then I always add West Charlotte High School, wow. the Mighty Lions. No matter what interview I've always done, I always said the Mighty Lions, West Charlotte High School. So, you know, sometimes pe people may not like the fact that some people are more quote unquote successful and they started to say, okay, yeah, he left his city and he owned, you know, he forgot where he came from, but I ain't never forgot where I came from. When I leave here, I'm going down to Grime Street with my family and we go, we go eat us some good food today. So they, they never got to worry about that. So let it be on record for all of those who question integrity, question his, his heart to community, the community that raised us, um, that groomed us, it's, it's always there and it always will be there. For sure. And speaking of your wife, shout out to Chantry. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a huge shout out. To this day, literally, I, I don't know. I don't know how she do it. Mm -hmm. I really don't know how she do it. One, putting up with me is not easy yeah. at all. And then two, you know, being strong enough to raise those three beautiful children is by herself, essentially. Because when you're in the, when, in the profession that we're in in coaching, wives are basically single moms because we're gone so much, we travel so much, and there's so much on them. But I take my hat off to her. She deserves everything that, you know, she will ever get from me. Just like the players, you're on the road, you're moving around, you have to be as focused and in the game just as well. So, yeah. people do not know Coach KB, he's a strength and conditioning coach yes. um, in, in football, collegiate football. Mm -hmm. So, talk about, you know, strength and conditioning, the, the vitality of that role. <laughs> that was a big word. That's the a huge word. The vitality That's a West Charlotte the word. Like, the vitality of yeah. that role, yeah. it takes a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, you sound really poised, which you are, mm -hmm. but I mean, to get those guys <laughs> revved up, you yeah. know, literally for the season and th throughout the yeah. season. Um, talk about that. It's definitely a challenge. You know, um, it takes a special personality to really be good at it, mm -hmm. to excel at it. Um, it depends, but you got different types. You got different types of strength and conditioning coaches or performance coaches. You got guys who just want to tell kids what to do and expect for them to do it, but then you have relationship builders. You have the uncle in the weight room. You have the father in the weight room. You have the brother in the weight room. And in our profession, we spend more time with the kids than anybody does. The academic advisors, the parents, the, their position coaches. So our relationships are a little bit different. So we have to really, really be cautious of everything we say and everything we do as well as hold them accountable to the standard that the head coach has set for the program. And more important, the standards of the university academically and socially and everything else. But from a training aspect, I mean, we just have to be very, very cautious about what we do and how we do it because a lot of liability falls on our hands, particularly from a physical um, standpoint. And as you know, it's, it's widely publicized with a lot of kids passing out and dying and stuff like that on college campuses during training. And a lot of that stuff comes because it's negligence on our part. But I've been fortunate to be around some really, really good head strength and conditioning coaches and some really good head athletic trainers and team doctors that I've never experienced that personally, but it does happen. And it's not always negligence, but it happens. But you know our, our our role in the overall development development not only from a football standpoint but just all around well being whether it's nutrition whether it's sports psychology whether it's uh, academics like we have our hands in every single thing so it's not nothing that we don't know about yeah. all of those things fall under your umbrella yes yeah. you have to be very educated on every single thing it's not you know not not a you know, like when you coach football, a lot of times you just got to know that position. You just got to know that sport or that scheme. But when you get into strength and condition, you have to know so much, not only from a physiological standpoint or um, an anatomical standpoint, but you have to know a little bit of sports psychology. You have to know a little bit of um, nutrition. And it's all through communication. It's all through building relationships. Like you literally have to be well-rounded to be really good in this profession. So in other words, you're a big deal. I've heard that. <laughs> you're a big deal. <laughs> so I'm going to go down your roster really quick. Uh, I know you mentioned Baylor, Baylor earlier yeah. in the interview. You're at Kansas now, yes. so that's where we, where, where we are. Before that, USC. Yeah, let's go deeper, though. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. I started out at John C. Smith University. Okay, let's talk about that. See, let's that's the thing. 
I was a golden bull. I did that. I, I coached at John C. Smith in 2009. And then while I was coaching at John C. Smith, not strength and condition, I was a running backs coach. I was interning at Wake Forest in the strength and conditioning department. So I would drive to Wake Forest in the morning and then come to John C. Smith in the afternoon. So I was doing strength and conditioning, cleaning floors, and learning the basics, the fundamentals of strength and conditioning under Coach Ethan Reeves at Wake Forest. And I would drive here and coach at John C. Smith. I did that for nine months to a year. If I remember correctly, were you on the payroll? Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll skip that. But I think that's knowledge for the people who yeah. don't know your story. I right. mean, they look at the big, big schools right. and they sound really good, but yeah. <laughs> it takes a starting point. Yeah. I learned a lot of John C. Smith. I really did. Um, you know, you learn a lot when you don't have a lot mm -hmm. and you got to be very resourceful. That's a tweetable moment, as Oprah would say. Right. You learn a lot when you don't have a lot. Yeah, you learn to be resourceful. You work with what you have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it, it was such a contrast because I was at Wake Forest earlier that day where they have everything. They have all the supplements. They have all the equipment. They have all the gear. They have all the academic resources. And then six hours later, I'm at John C. Smith, and they, they're doing the best they can, yeah. but it's not Wake Forest. So I was seeing two different worlds in one day. And smelling two different stenches. One hundred percent, but it was so pure. Yeah, John C. Smith was so pure, um, and I just learned a lot. Yeah, and when I went to Baylor, the floodgates opened. What changed? What changed? Did anything change with you? What changed? What changed with me is I took the risk. I took the risk to leave Charlotte. Um, I probably could have stayed here, did some in and out jobs, or. I had just got out of the NFL, so we had a little bit saved up. We were able to do whatever we needed to do. But uh, I told my wife, I told Century's family like a year before all this happened, I told her that I'm going to move to Texas. I said, we're going to move to Texas. And she was like, why are you going to move to Texas? What's in Texas? And I was always saying, there's something in Texas for me. And I know sports is big in Texas, but sports is not huge like that in North Carolina, right? And Maybe it is now, but back then it wasn't. It was more of, it's more of a banking city, in my opinion, financial investments, all that stuff. So I was telling Century, I'm going to move to Texas. And I was telling her father and everybody. And they was like, dude, why do you keep saying that? I said, because I am. And so um, I had started doing my job at John C. Smith. And I started doing my job at Wake Forest. And during that time, I was sending my resume out to all the colleges and universities in the country and I never got a response. Nobody ever emailed me back. The first person to email, email me back was Coach Craig Fitzgerald. He's at Tennessee now, and Mickey Marotti, who's at Ohio State. And every time I see him, I give him a big old hug and tell him thank you because sometimes you just need a little bit of hope to say somebody sees me, yeah. somebody understands what I'm trying to do, and they just they would always keep in touch with me. But an opportunity came for me to go to Central Michigan and do like a GA spot with football, I had an opportunity to go to Auburn as a graduate assistant for strength and conditioning, which is like five hours away. Or I had an opportunity to go to Baylor to work for free, which is 19 hours away. And I had always told my family that I'm going to move to Texas. So I took the unpaid internship in Baylor. So I called Sentry, <laughs> I called Sentry. I say, um, you got a minute? And she was like, yeah, what's up? She was in a great mood, a <laughs> great mood. And I said, well, I just got off the phone with Baylor. They're going to offer me an unpaid internship, but it probably possibly could become paid within the next six months or so. I said, but I've also just been offered a GA spot at, at Auburn. So she was like, man, Auburn's great. It's five hours down the road. It's an hour and a half from Atlanta. It'd be great. I said, but I told you a, a year ago that I'm going to Texas. So if it's okay with you, I would love to accept this position. And she was like, if that's what you want to do, then go for it. So I called her dad, who's a pastor. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, Pops, I need a favor from you. Will you please allow Santry and the kid, my son, Peyton at the time, who was one, to come and live back at the house? I have to go. And he was like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Baylor. He said, where is that? I said, that's in Texas. And he didn't, he didn't say another word. He said, you've been said you want to go to Texas? 
you drop that family off, you do whatever you need to do at the house, and I left. And when I left, I knew I wasn't coming back home. Because there was no way, there was no way that I was gonna let another man take care of my family for more than a year. Yeah. And I went down there, I was focused, I took that 19 hour drive, I probably cried 18 of them. And once I got to Baylor, it was, I had laser focus. I was there for one reason, is to be able to make enough money to get my family down there. And one thing I know about you, uh, for people just hearing that story, that they're like, wow, that's a big sacrifice. But one thing I do know about you, you never sidestep. You're always focused on what's ahead. And you can probably see a few steps ahead more than most people. It's easy to look back at that and t tell that story now. Mm -hmm. But when you were going through it, mm -hmm. did you doubt? Where did your hope come from? How did you keep pushing forward? Never doubted. I never doubted. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, once I made a decision, it was going to work. There's no way it wasn't going to work because it was in my control. Mm -hmm. I control my attitude and my effort. And I asked Baylor, what do they need out of me? They say, we just need energy. We need a great attitude and we need great effort. If, I, if that's the requirement, then I can do that can do all it. day long. And I knew maybe because I was a little arrogant. I still am a little arrogant because they call us, anytime you make it in professional sports, that's not easy to do. And 99% of people don't make it. So there's a process that you have to go through. You have to know how to get up in the morning. You got to know how to train. You got to know how to do these things. And you got to do it for a long time. And since I couldn't apply that to football anymore, I just took the same habits to this profession. And that's why I am where I am today. So I took that same eagerness, that same determination to not, to, to not be denied and put it towards that profession. I knew I was going to win. Because if only 1% make it to the National Football League and you got a, so many strength and conditioning coaches, like, it had to be easy for me. And it was. It was easy. I felt like I was one of the 1%. Yeah. I felt like I was elite, not because of my athletic ability, but because of my mindset and the way I thought. So I figured if I put that same type of energy into, into strength and condition, there's no way I was gonna lose. And my wife knew that, and my, my father knew, law knew that as well. So there's no way he's coming back home. And so that's when it was just you, Shantree, and Peyton, and now it's yeah. like <laughs> you, yep. Shantree, Peyton, Peyton. Aubrey and Storm. And Storm. So I, I just want I want I like to do the unfolding because a lot of people don't get the you know the big picture in yeah. terms of the longevity of your consistency, how long that dated back to where you are now. And yeah. so I wanted to kind of frame that for, oh, that's for awesome. everyone's listening. That's awesome. So tell me this: you have the responsibility of being so many things to so many people mm -hmm. every day. Every day. So I think sometimes we overlook the strong people. So what keeps you together? What holds you up? I mean, because that's a long duration of being consistent, being, you know, performing at an excellent level, whether it's on the professional side as mm -hmm. well as on the uh, coaching side. Mm -hmm. Who holds you up? Like, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay up? I have a, I have a crazy schedule. I mean, I wake up first thing in the morning, and the first thing I do is read. It may be, it may be the Bible, but it's always, actually, the first thing I do in the morning is I wake up, I spend 15, 20 minutes reading the Bible, mm -hmm. and then I always write down a gratitude log, and I do it every single day. What was your gratitude log for today? Today, I was grateful for my family. I was grateful for opportunity to go be a part of the community, just the fabric of the community. I sat down in West Charlotte stands and watched a Little League football game today. And I was also thankful for the opportunity to come here and meet with you. Did you, did you just add that? The three things I'm grateful for every single day. It never I appreciate fails. That. Yeah. I appreciate that. So that, that's a part of it. Um, I train every day. Mm -hmm. I work out every day. I do something physical every day because to me, that's God's time. I don't put headphones on. I don't cut music on. I believe he knows how to get me exactly where he wants me to be. And working out is, is his time. And I just listen. That's funny because I feel the same way too. Yeah. Whether it be yoga, I'm doing a lot of yoga now, especially mm -hmm. pregnant, um, just to stay flexible. But the mental aspect of that release and that connection with him, mm -hmm. well, I'm not on the professional performance <laughs> side. But, right. So I'm yeah. hear a lot of people at my level of you know, athleticism just saying, hey, but I, I resonate with that. That's mm -hmm. God's time, but I, I do. Mm -hmm. 
And another thing that keeps me going, like, I, don't, I don't have a choice. Yeah. Like, when you don't have a choice, you do it. Mm -hmm. Because I have four people literally dependent on me. So it's no time for anything else. Yeah. I have to be able to get this done. And the only thing I ask for is the courage, the strength, and the tenacity to do it and, and, and to carry out the plan. Other than that, I'm ready to go. And you've added more uh, to your plate. Not yeah. only as a coach, you, yeah. you have a nonprofit. Yes. Um, the Thump Foundation. Yep. Team Thump Foundation. And so let me see if I can remember. T H U M P. Yep. Togetherness. Yep. Honor. Yes. Understanding. Yes. M. You got it. You got it. M. You got it. Help me. No. Mentorship. Mentorship. Mm -hmm. And P. Provision. Provision. That's the hardest one okay. to remember. <laughs> I was about to say persistence. Or purpose. Because it so describes you. Too. Right, right. Talk about that. Um, wow. It's, um, it's personal to me. Mm -hmm. It's personal to me. So growing up, I was always different intellectually, you know. Um, and I remember in the third grade, I was moved from Hidden Valley to Hampshire Hills. And so I was going to Hidden Valley Elementary School and I transferred over. We moved, so I ended up going to Briarwood. While I was at Hidden Valley, I was making excellent like grades or S's and E's, whatever it is, satisfactory and excellent, yeah. whatever, right? But when I got to Briarwood, everything changed. And it was more like D's and F's. And I was very shy, um, very confidence was low, self-esteem was low. And so the teachers wanted to test me for like learning disabilities. And my mom was like, ain't nothing wrong with this boy. This boy's smart. Y'all have no idea how smart this boy is. And so I just remember sitting there taking a the test and I was so humiliated and I was so sad because everybody knew that I was being tested. My, my, my I was gonna say teammates, but my classmates knew that I was being tested. I was the new kid and I was quiet. And I, hate, I hated reading in front of people, you know? And um, so they tested me for all these learning disabilities and, you know, mental health and ADD and ADHD and dyslexia and all these things. And um, it was funny because after they, t after they tested me and the results came back, I actually think they tested out as a genius. But there's, there was an area that I, that I did lack in and they tried to label me as um, a reading dyslexic. My mom never let me adapt that, adopt that. Go mom. And so she never allowed them to really put me in different classrooms. She was like, no, we're going to figure it out. And you got to, you know, put aside time of the day. Or we're going to read and we're going to do things. We're going to write because they're not going to label you because we know how that thing goes. They put you in special classes for special courses. And then you in there with people who really have issues. You know what I mean? And uh, we, I just know what that does to kids from a, self-confidence standpoint and a self-image standpoint and an awareness standpoint. So I created Thump uh, for the togetherness, the honor, the understanding, the mentorship, mentorship and the provision because there's a lot of kids out there that maybe they don't have the mom and they don't have the dad to be able to stand up to the teacher or to the principal to say, no, my child is not going to be put in those special classrooms or they're not going to be put in those uh, uh, what's so those, those, those mobile units outside the classroom, you know, and basically institutionalizing the kid when they're eight to ten years old, and so a lot of a lot of a lot of kids just don't have that resource. So what I wanted to do, what I am doing, I'm finding that demographic of kids, whether it be through the boys and girls clubs, whether it be through the social worker, whether it be through the school principals or the teachers, or just being out in the community and getting with children who may have those type of intellectual differences and we're going to help them find the proper resources whether it be tutoring, whether it be sports, art, dance, technology because everybody has something. Everybody has a gift. I was just phenomenal in football. Mm -hmm. That was my deal but that gave me the confidence, that gave me the self-esteem. And when people said something about Thump, they didn't say anything about school. They said that boy can run that ball or that boy can play that ball. But that was great for me because I needed that as a kid because I knew there was an area in my life that I lacked. So um, that's, that's what Thump is about. But we do a lot of different initiatives. Like right now, we're actually working on a transition home in Lawrence where we're helping a family that's going from homelessness to find an independency. So we're cleaning the house out, painting the walls, doing everything. We're just going to do a whole flip my house deal for the, for the family. Awesome. So 
I'm, I'm extremely excited for the Thump Foundation, Team Thump Foundation. Everything is based out of Charlotte. My family's here. Mm -hmm. You know, my family is Team Thump. So when I say Team Thump, it's, it's teachers, it's doctors, it's lawyers, it's, it's social workers, it's, um, it's school principals, it's yourself. What we do, we find a kid, it may be a kid that may want to get in the media or may want to get in photography. And it may be a young lady, but she may have her own struggles within herself. And I say, you know what, young lady, what do you love to do? What is it? I love cameras. I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going to call you. And tell them to come down. To and I'm telling them to come right here and you're going to teach them. <laughs> but that's team thump because everybody needs it. You need a family. You know, you need a family, you need a community. So everything is based out of Charlotte. I'm just in Lawrence, but my family is here. So Team Thump is definitely here That's in Charlotte. Awesome. My social media is Team Thump Foundation Instagram. And my Facebook is Team Thump Foundation as well. Do you think it was, you know, a part of you becoming the man that you are um, today to create such a legacy? Or do you think it was always a part of you? It was always a part of yeah. me. And, I mean, and, I, and I ask that question because, you know, I think as far as, you know, as we all are on our individual journeys, mm -hmm. um, you know, some people believe it's a big aha moment where they arrive and then it becomes like, you know, the pieces are together. Mm -hmm. Well, were others where, where they're able to look back on their journey and say, the right. pieces were always there. Mm -hmm. I, I put them together mm -hmm. or God has helped me put them, them together over time. Mm -hmm. and so. And that's why I asked that question, because you've been thumped to me for years, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so now you have a, a richness of what it means. Put a meaning to it. Yeah. You know, because when you hear thump, particularly when it came to me, mm -hmm. it was always about sports. Mm -hmm. And I'm 40. Well, I'm 30. Mm -hmm. I'll be 38. But I don't want to be 40 talking about what I did at West Charlotte or what I did, did at Northeast Mississippi or what I did at Syracuse or what I did in the NFL. Like none of that matters because it's not, it's not going to do anything to help change lives. You know what I mean? So if my name is going to be Thump and people want to call me that, I want to be associated with something other than what I can do with a ball in my hand. And I was like, you know what? I don't even go by Thump anymore. My name's Keith. But the people who know me as Thump, then they say, you know what? When they hear the name Thump now, they're going to be like, okay, this is who he is and this is what he does. I love yeah. it. We're, we're going to have a fast round. Tell me, uh, when I say these words, just, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, yep. um, however far you want to go with it. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Seriously. <gosh. laughs> okay. Nothing too crazy. No, no, you no. You know, no, I don't okay. get crazy. Yeah. But uh, fear. Doesn't exist. Why? Because I know God. Faith. Is everything. Without faith, you have nothing. Food. <laughs> I love you say that because I, I look food is food is everything and I'm not talking about hamburgers and hot dogs I'm not talking about that everything is food everything is food everything nourishes your words nourish but they also destruct everything is food what I read is food what I say is food how I live is food not only for myself but for others everything is food are you, are you all going to ever settle back in Charlotte? I can't say ever. I can't say ever, but I don't plan on it. Okay. I plan on making Las Vegas my home. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> I love Las Vegas. Wow. But even even while I'm on this coaching journey, like I'll be on this coaching journey for as long as I can, mm -hmm. um, but I believe we're going to make Las Vegas my home. But Charlotte is my heart. Thank you, Keith, or Coach KB, as they'll call you in Kansas. I hope you all have a great football season. This has been another episode of Let's Talk Game with Tiffany Lewis. I'm your host. Please be sure to subscribe to this podcast on Apple iTunes or Spotify. And rate us. Leave your comments, feedback. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Let's Talk Game.